Right, so this, uh, this, um, this ball of metal was destroyed by a tornado. This is the ball of metal. This is what it used to look like. Big explanation there. Temporary exhibit, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, it looks like it's probably been here a while. A tornado turned that long thing into this. <clears throat> The six, uh, the six, three eighths inch. So it'd be the 5400. Yeah, I want, I want 10 feet of that. So I got a pretty nice setup here using the, the electricity, there's water, bathrooms, but the internet, the internet is much to be desired. I actually have to, to go over to the, the visitor center, I have to walk over, I can't reach it from here. And it's not that far, but it's not close enough. I wonder if a lot of people take this trail. It doesn't really stand out. It's on the edge of the city. This is like a, uh, in the afternoon times. It's uh, usually a popular time for people to walk around, get out of their house after sitting all day. I don't see really anybody though. You can see the sun is going down. All right, it's supposed to be 90 today, and it doesn't look like I'm gonna have the shade that I want for parking. I could park on grass, but I'm guessing, because why else would they have this sign here? I think this is to indicate that it's cool to park on this field, but I'm not getting any evening shade here. So Bonno has addressed the some kind of off-roading issue that they're having with cars by putting up these signs giving a $50 fine but I would think that you could probably pull off to the side a little bit not be forced to park off of the not be forced to park on the road like this it's built up a little bit they, they embanked the end here to prevent people from driving into the field. I think they're targeting people driving into the field that they don't want to happen. I don't think that sign is really about <clears throat> parking on the side, which is something I'm, I'm interested in doing along this road <clears throat> for the evening shade. I think that they could they probably allow parking on the side here. This is very attractive. So it takes about two pots of the boiled grass. So I don't really get a lot of water in here. I don't give the water a lot of space because of the because of the grass. Two pots to to really fill up the oats to my liking I don't want it too soupy and about two pots with full grass is enough so that was the first pot I have to let it sit wait for the second pot uh, but uh, it works out in the end also I'm just starting the practice of using two spoons because if I have to pull this out of the grain pot I got all this food on it and I like to stamp down the grass. I want to stamp it down a little bit, break it up a little bit. It's it's hot. 
I can break it up a little bit, maybe get a, a little bit more nutrition out of it into the water before pouring it into the, the, the various grains. But I want to use two spoons. <clears throat> Just trying to keep cool in here. Got three fans. What's going on outside? What? All right, I stopped at this old Krogan farm district. It's marked as a historical spot on the maps, but they don't want access to allow access further down. There are signs about private property entering, so I only walked up to that gate. I guess they just don't want people walking around it. It's interesting though, it's some old barn. But it looks like there's activity. The roads, the ruts are, are well grooved in. I'm about 10 miles south of the Canadian border. And uh, I, I, you know, I'm not crossing. This road goes straight to the the checkpoint but I'm not I'm not crossing I spilt my water again so I gotta it gives things a chance to dry out it's a little frustrating with that all right I'm not too enthused about this mystical horizons because it's it's kind of like whatever it's free and not much to it and uh, yeah you just uh, watch the watch the stars align or something maybe I could maybe I could see Canada from here maybe Canada's no no the forest is in the way see, see actually that might be the border Three miles, so I should, oh, there's a bit of a trail. Oh wow, so maybe there's a trail that goes to those other peaks, possibly. You get deep enough into the Turtle Mountain Forest and you can start seeing birch groves, birch trees. Oh, no hunting or trespassing. Okay, I'll go in a little bit further. It kind of looks like fresh tracks coming in. I've probably walked a mile from the mystical horizons. <clears throat> this is kind of worth it to see birch, fallen birch. They're generally pretty weak, so this, this tree will fall shortly after this one. They are not the strongest of wood, but uh, they have salicin. Sellison and and uh, that's pretty cool. Sap you get you get um, like a, a birch sap from them. It's pretty neat. I was going through mostly uh, dominant oak oak uh, orchard. Apparently ash is dominant in the east. I suppose it's no big deal, but this rock is really speckled. <laughs> For the people who drive back on these uh, back trails through these types of woods, they are very likely to be driving with chainsaws, carrying chainsaws. Check out this ant. It's trying to bite the heck out of my hat. And they're all over the place. Everywhere I walked. He's just biting away like he's doing something. Whoa, what a grip. As soon as they come across something that's moving, they just start attacking. They're all over the concrete. 
So the ants around here do not run for their life out of fear when they see something much bigger than them almost killing them. They just start looking up, opening their jaws, and ready to bite. They do not run for their lives like a lot of other ants I've seen. Very unique, unique behavior. And I wasn't going to record these ants' uh, uh, hives, nests. Uh, I thought they were unique, but I didn't think it was that unique. I recorded nests similar in Washington made of pine needles. These ants make very similar nests to Washington ants with the pine needles. They like they like those pine needle, piling up pine needles or just needle-like things. Decided to make some tea at Mystical Horizons. I'm actually using the water though for for uh, the last of my, uh, I don't know, not grits, something, whatever it's called. And I think I'm gonna wait till this evening time and see how the sun sets over this. Yeah, it's, it's uh, kind of cool to watch it set over the sun, but what about with this kind of equipment? All right, I'm guessing that uh, this is the, the summer solstice. sun being more close to that element than either the spring or the winter. And the best time to determine the solstices is during the evening time. It's really neat to stare out at this uh, landscape. I'm about 500 feet above it. And off in the distance, there's oil extraction, oil pumping. I think I see a flickering flame that I would expect to see at night pretty easily. I passed this church with a graveyard next to it right there. All this used to be underwater during the, the ice glacier age. This, this is flattened because of water. So I'm on a higher hill, and this Turtle Hill was, or Turtle Mountain, which is 2,500 feet. I guess 2,500 feet qualifies as a mountain. It was uh, way, uh, like a deposit, about a series of deposits somehow that were able to pile up. I just think about some of the land features that I have, I have uh, like learned about for the first time in my life. There's not something that I would have discovered or been aware of looking on the map by itself. I, I glaze over so much on the map that I don't even think about. But when I get close to it and I start wanting to like look for areas to, to park, uh, I pay more close attention. And I would not have known about Turtle Mountain if I had not gotten like close to the area to see it. And then uh, it looks like I could probably park here for the night. Cause I'll use the excuse that I'm waiting, waiting for it to get dark so I can like watch the stars with that telescope thing or something. That's kind of the the spirit of this this spot is astronomy. So why would they want to kick people out at night? Kick the uh, cops trespassing as astronomists. So apparently they are discouraging visiting this Coughlin Castle. You can see it looks like it's being lived in. So, whatever.
was City Hall, okay. In here, so I just okay, yeah, I just uh, pulled up and parked, and I came for the library, and I mean, I see that what they have, and then I see what's available here, and I'm here for the Wi-Fi. Oh, okay. It's usually why I stop at the libraries. Okay. And it's, you know, it's kind of rare to see libraries inside the city hall, and also yeah. <laughs> with the police station right there. Yeah, and it's that's convenient. just our office. The, we, we mainly go to Rolette County, and most of our dealings, right here is just paperwork, pretty much. It's it's not okay. You know, it's not an office. It's a it, it's not an uh, where you have like a um, a clerk. You don't have a clerk here. No. no. Okay. Yeah. We answer our own phones and that's it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just here for the internet though. Okay. So. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. I seen I seen it on YouTube or something. You're Terry Hines, right? No, no, I'm not Terry Hines. But where you saw you looked on the screen or something? You saw that? Yeah, I'm I'm quick. So. Oh, okay. But uh, All right, Hines, I had a teacher. Hines. Just as long as I understand where you got my name, because I don't even know who you are. I'm Chief Police Putra. How are you? Well, what's, what's your last name? William Putra. William Putra, P U T R A. P O I T R A. P O I T R A. Okay. Yeah, All right, well, now that, grade, now that we know each other's names, <laughs> go yeah. on. I had a teacher in fifth grade. His name was Mr. Hines. He always used to change his voice when uh, reading uh, books to us. Oh, that's cute. But I think he's a game warden now over in Botno. Is he, is he your dad? Or? I was no. I, I'm not related to anyone around here. But oh, okay. I was in I was in Botno. I met the chief there, Chief. <sighs> chief. Well, I, don't, I don't even know the chief. Clark or Watson, Chief Watson. Or no. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. That's yeah. Because the sheriffs the sheriffs control all of Botno County. There's no police uh, for no. any any of the cities that. And it's all sheriffs. It's a lot of farm towns. So, so yeah, they they can get. It. There used to be a, a police station in yeah. in Willow, just a little small town. I yeah, but but Hines is like it brought up one of my favorite teachers. I thought you were the son well. Of one of I mean, the spelling is it like the spelling, the uh, like the ketchup bottle. Yeah, and then H I E N H I E N Z. No, that's 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 H E H E I N Z E. Okay. It's like it's yeah. like the ketchup bottle, but with an E after the Z. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, but, I think he's a game warden now down in Botno. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, I'm a, I enjoyed story time in fifth grade but with him. So. Yeah. He um, had like that wavy hair kind of thing, and he always had Levi jackets on. And he was, <laughs> a, he was a teacher. Yeah, okay. he was a teacher for a while. Yeah, yeah I liked him. Yes, yeah, so that's. Uh, I mean, re, a, lot, a lot of people. Hippie. A lot of people like to have uh, stories read out loud to them. Yeah. They, they, they just, you know, they can't look at the words and, and take it in. It's he like, made it really entertaining. It, yeah. Like I said, he, he changed yeah. his voice per character. And he was really, really good. There's, at yeah, there's, there's a, a lot of, a lot of people that really want it, want it like spoken or whatever, instead of them having to take the effort and, yeah. yeah. So it's it's good that people do that. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. for sure. See, I was just asking. So, it, um, that would have been cool because I, I met his son, but I don't remember his name. We played yeah. basketball together. So uh -huh. yeah, and all right. Um, you, this this is uh, yeah, this is city hall. This do, does this close at five? I think. Is yeah, it? the front okay. doors and everything this, gonna be done. But well, if the okay. library's still just, open, the library will still. Nah, it'll it'll be closed when there, this whole place is closed, and it's gonna be five, right? I so, I four thirty yeah. maybe. Four, oh, could be earlier. I, I know. I could. Okay, city, just check the front. The city and everything. I'm not sure if the library still Okay. Open, so. All right. And how's how's the crime in this city? I was gonna walk around, check it out a little it's, bit. Uh oh, you're Honestly, paused. it's hit or miss. Oh, oh, yeah. It's hit or miss. It, it, some, sometimes we'll have our ups, sometimes we'll have our downs. Right now, we're in a little bit of a low, quiet before the storm. In, I'm thinking. So. In the in the sum, summertime, late yeah. late July, it's it's kind of. Quiet. All right. Okay, well, last year it wasn't. This year it is. So, yeah. I don't know. We summer, take it as it comes. Summer times it, it pick and pick up, and then winter times it slows down. I suppose kind of. Sometimes, a, yeah. A it, it also depends on per officer. Like that guy gets way more calls than I do. I don't know. Oh, all right. And that's okay. You, you guys, you, you get. You, I mean, that's going to be a tendency. You're going to get more calls than actually come upon something happening. Yeah. Well, right? there's it's, proactive and yeah, there's you know, reactive. Is, is this a proactive? We try to be it's a okay. small town, so that's yeah. why that's, I'm, I'm check check everybody. I'm gonna say out. that's why our crime rate's pretty low. Cause Cause that's, that's, we're, we're, we've trolled down quite a bit. Because that's why you, you asked me, you know, what am I, you know, what am I, kind of what am I doing here? Because it's you're looking at what uh, like. Um, yeah, it's out of the norm. Yeah, I'd yeah, say. like 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 a pattern, a patterns yeah. of of the sit in the city, and when things are a little out yeah. of a, a town this of, small, I, I yeah. know every vehicle pretty much, not every vehicle. I mean, yeah. Obviously, there's vehicles I don't know, but who parks yeah. where, at which house, yeah. who long, for how long. It, so, yeah, and that's yeah. 
small town kind that, of feel. That could be the type of calls you get too. Like somebody's parked here, you know, they call in and say somebody's exactly. parked here. It's not normally. Yeah. It, it, it's such so, a suspicious vehicle. And I get there and it's like, okay, their their cousins are in from out of town. So. Yeah. All right. That's small town. It's yeah. Small stuff. town with them. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, sorry to bother you. Right. Yeah. Sure. I just, all right. I just wanted to know if you were my fifth grade teacher son. All so, right. Yeah, all right. Sounds good. Looks like the rhubarb's coming up pretty good here. I wonder if they don't pick it because they don't trust it, maybe. I could boil some of that in a teapot, just drink the liquid. <laughs> Alright, so there's a sign that said that camping is this way. I've reached the dead ends. This looks like camping. I'm not seeing any signs that uh, say there's a price. I think I could probably just come out here and, and park for the night, wait till, oh, wait a second, <laughs> they all, they usually, like 90% of them say that you got to pay, here's something, stop at Sinclair Station for overnight camping passes. Where's Sinclair Station? Who's gonna bother doing that? Alright, I think I, what I would do is just question if I got stopped by the cops or anything. St oh, Cynix. Or Sinclair, they erased the Cynix. I don't think I'll do that. I don't know where they are at, and regardless. I think I could just use the excuse that I didn't know. All right, I've never seen seeds sprout inside a tomato before. The tomato looks fine. It tastes okay. But I got sprouted seeds. I just, I've never seen it. It's multiple, like this right here. I almost thought there were worms at first. But they're sprouted seeds. Here I thought I was good in Cavalier County for Wi-Fi, but I gotta like wait. I could take some guesses. I've come across a similar type of password system before, and it's uh it's been kind of kind of easy. Just type in guest, I guess. It's a test. Wow! All I had to do is wow, that's an old vehicle. All I had to do is go to the front front doors. And this is a rare library that actually puts their password right on the front door. I, I actually assume that they would not do that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Look at this. They got to put two signs for their hours. <laughs> Maybe people don't notice the one on the left. Some guy here has some kind of vintage car party. Old Mustang. Old whatever this thing is, illegally parked. Oh, it's a European because the steering wheel's on the right side. <laughs> it got rained on. And then this old vehicle over here, it's interesting. It also gets rained in. Oh, I was wondering, wow, he's got a cannon? Pulled by a four-wheeler. That looks in good shape. This looks like a working model. Yeah. Pretty neat. <clears throat> So what's the culture like? What's the feeling like to have this high school next to a graveyard? It's kind of amusing to think that they got that as a part of the immediate landscape. You don't separate cemeteries from from the youth. You bring them closer together. I've seen cemeteries near colleges. It's not everywhere, and it makes me wonder if it has any impact on the thought processes.
Let's see here. I've got Lakota 51, Le Cavalier 34, and then Rock Lake 42. Pretty far distances. This is an isolated city. I've been seeing a lot more levers around these parts. Levers foods. It's nice to see them at least. Nice grocery store. Look, this bar got messed up. The hot bar. What happened here? The wall blew out. It doesn't seem like a car would have hit it. It seemed like it was pushed from the inside. Hmm. Listen, this place is out of business. Universal parts. How do they just leave? How do they just not notice this dollar sitting in the water? It's been like, it looks like it's been here a while. <laughs> here, let me. Yeah. All right, I've never done a Keurig before, so I'm playing around with it. I didn't even put anything. I didn't even put uh, a cup in yet, but I'm running it through the cycle because that's what's suggested. So first of all, I fill this thing up, and then this was up. So I had to take this lever and put it down. Um, okay, and then uh, it just kind of you hit the power, I guess, or and then the 10 ounce and then this and then it runs so now that was a test run there's nothing in there so now I'll just empty out like it suggested and that's supposed to be really hot so now this is the real run I should have enough water I think okay 10 ounce and then and then it's like instant I think. There we go. A little brown liquid. <laughs> that's that's uh that's uh pretty um easy. I'm not too thrilled. I don't want to have a lot of coffee, but I'm just playing. Just want to play with it, and also have some coffee with it. I got milk in the car. I can mix. All right, this is probably my best spot to hang out uh, for the day, potentially, in Langdon. I did not like a lot of places that I was looking at, especially for the park. Next to the, next to the landfill. And what is this, German camel mill? Around the bathroom, that's probably locked. Is this German camel mill? Seems like it. Strange. It's a lot of it. I got a lot of barbed wire strands on this fence. Instead of using chain link fence, I just decided to uh, lay barbed wire about what, 20, 20 strands or so? To protect some water the water department's water it's uh, old though so I don't know if the security is at the same I feel it needs to be at the same level but at the time it was it looked like it was pretty important oh geez that's a dangerous one I'm just kind of oh, trying to pass the time. It's finally started to cool down. It's a good relief. Apples are coming out. Kind of stands out on its own here.
port of entry straight ahead, 17 miles. Rock Lake to the west, 42 miles, Cavalier 34. I guess I'm going to Cavalier. I'm gonna get a look at these yellow flowers, a little closer look. They're growing a lot of these things. What is it? Next to levers. It's nice to walk through uh, small town grocery stores, but the prices here are pretty high. It's taken a little bit more from my savings. So I parked here most of the day. I did record the drive in, so I guess this isn't, isn't necessary to record. And yeah, it's pretty much been just me. Left my car here and no problems. I would not use those bathrooms. It's only one side. That, oh man, there's so much buzzing around. There's a lot of fly, bee, mosquito activity with this. This is all orchestrating this this uh, really noticeable buzz. <clears throat> All right, there's a strange large creature. There it is. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised it didn't run for the water. I think it's a, a beaver, but it's probably not gonna let me get close enough to really determine it. But I'm really surprised that it didn't run for the water. When I uh, looped around, when I looped around my car, it didn't run for the water. There it goes. Okay, I just needed to get close enough to it. All right, all right, backing up, backing up. Yeah, it's certainly a beaver. All right, so I wander over to this area, and this is a camping area. And I see they have established some prices for the Langdon City camping area. Six dollars for a tent. And pretty much just uh, campers required permit to park. So even just parking and not putting out a tent might uh, get some attention. And you get like the permits in this in this box here so you put that in the front window of my camp of my camper <laughs> all right and then put it in so they got quite a system here and the bathrooms I'm gonna guess are 24 hours what then the reason I'm recording I guess mainly is because I left the light on it's because I could actually shower in here can I lock the door Oh, look at that. So I can even get some, I could shower and actually have privacy too, because this works. Look at that, I could actually get a shower. I don't have a towel, but I mean, that's, gotta take advantage of them situations. It's very rare if I'm even, uh, I don't plan on camping here, but a free shower works. Maybe that'll convince me. No, you need help. No, I can't. All right. I well, you guys, I know you guys are closed and all. Oh, I, I, did you, you get broken I'm, into? Huh? Did you get broken into? Oh, no, no. If I get what I bought, it's a little window, the little ones like that. I just wondered if you knew around here. I just thought you might need help finding. Well, I'm, I'm believing. You know, oh, no, no, I'm heading, just I'm heading, I'm heading, I'm heading east. Oh yeah. I don't care. Okay. I just wonder if you need any help. Yeah. I'm trying to be hospitable. Well, what's your expertise? You well, got. My expertise being yeah. a bitch. Oh well, okay. I yeah, I don't. Good. Yeah, maybe I could give you some. Maybe I could give you some emails. I don't know. Or some phone, some phone numbers, I guess, or whatever. Oh. Oh. No, um, no, I just thought. I just thought the, uh, yeah, I gotta. I'm trying to, trying to. I think I was gonna do some laundry. Oh. I, don't know, I was gonna leave my car here, and then do some laundry. I just. I just wanted to gather up some stuff. I, I see that's available over there, so. Actually, they're open I, all night now. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't before? Okay. And you've been in there? Oh, yeah, I've been there. 
Okay, so all the video games and all that stuff. It's... I don't know if there's video games. Oh. I haven't been in there a long time. All right, they seem to have the farm machinery arranged by a year, possibly. This was all forged in Chicago. Whatever, a winch. Looks like it would gather some steel cable. They control steel cable with this thing. But around here, there is a lot of farm equipment. They put in rows, they mow, they mow around it. And you can see the, the, it looks like the more modern stuff is up front and the older stuff. This would, looks like this would take a rubber tire. So whatever this wagon is, it's old, but uh, not, not quite. Not quite the uh, ancient, yeah, like the manure spreader doesn't look like it would take a, tie, uh, a rubber tire. A lot of these, when they put knobs, they don't intend to have any rubber, any rubber tires put on. They stand alone as, them, as they're on their own. Although, well, maybe it's not that necessary. This one... This one has knobs, and it looks like it's curved to take a tire. Cause that's that's pretty common for rims. That one, let's see, that one is curved. Looks like it might take a tire. It's got knobs. This one is this one is curved to the outside, and it's got uh, yeah. These are these knobs plus. So this is not designed to take a rubber tire. Yeah, I got rubber tires here. Because the curve goes in when it's for rubber tires, but the curve goes out when it's no rubber tires. Look, they looks like they really wore this plow, a three head three head plow. Yeah, a rubber tire over there, but it's not well. Just a rubber a rubber strip wrapped around the the rim. So, yeah, it's uh, a lot of variety, a lot of a lot of variety of plows and and manure spreaders. What a display! They put this thing up on bricks. Such a difference in tire size too. I wonder if that's that's intentional. It's got the original wooden spokes. Wow, wooden spokes. Yeah, this, this old truck has seen better days. With the wooden roof and walls and stuff. Man, that's pretty neat. At this museum. So they got some neat outdoor displays for free. Wagon over there. For free across the street there's a state park that wow there's a lady there it's not even 8 a.m. and the lady is there like at a gate shack to likely collect the money and so I decided to come over here instead yeah here's a you got rubber tire versus before that time they're using these spikes So around here when the the stuff on display loses its display quality, they put it on the edge of the forest and they're just they're just heaps of twisted they're just heaps of, of metal with uh, broken wood like this thing and back here it's it's just uh, so rotten and falling apart they just tossed it into the woods. It's not display quality. It's really interesting, but yeah, people kept really busy. Kept really busy back in the day. Putting all this together with all these moving parts. And now we have, now we look at them 
with the difference. I look at them as just ancient relics. <clears throat> Something that we could go back to, in a way. Just a heap of, of metal now that supported. You'd have to reverse engineer these types of products when as a, at, a, at a time they were mainstream. Right, moving away from that, which is a lot to see, come around the corner to see potato equipment. Everything that, that would be involved with, with uh, preparing potatoes. They've, they've put it together. So there's, yeah, potato digger. Old potato digger. I guess I gotta get under the ground to get to them potatoes. It's got various stages and ages for the machinery. This is the latest, I guess, for the historical. <clears throat> and it looks like more at this red barn, too. The museum has an actual functional windmill. It looks in good shape. It's actually spinning. It's not making a ratchet, a lot of noise. And also, it appears to be pumping a pump. This thing is actually operational on this museum ground. And it's getting a little drip here and there into this tub. So you get an idea of how this thing works. Isn't that something? It's just pumping away. On this cable. Let's see what the force feels like. I could stop it. Does that mess it up? Wow. got a little sign. What does that sign say? Alright, so they, they recreated it uh, uh, back in 2014. And then there's more displays out here. Threshers and other old stuff. Looks like this old truck was advertising a business. W.M. Steger Hammer Mill Grinding. Hammer Mill Grinding. That's some, that's some smashable glass. And it had a, a cushion seat with springs. Wow, the front glass looks very dangerous. Looks like it could smash easily. Had old plates, North Dakota, 1950. Some kind of 1950 model, maybe a 1940 model. We got plates for 1950. <clears throat> More vehicles over here, different stages of age. Just have them sitting out here. And these can get covered up completely by snow. They're all vulnerable to the elements. Wonder, the door probably opens. Oh, look at that. It's, <laughs> is it locked? Windows are still good. After all these years, the windows are still good. Unless they've replaced them. Look at this. This window... That window's still good. Cracked in the front, but they got some. Everything is torn up. Everything is beat up except 
the windows are in good shape very clear after all these years wooden spokes on this one cranks and various equipment the battery is still attached for this Hmm. <clears throat> All right, it looks like I can just let myself in. I kind of figured they weren't going to lock this thing. So there's no lock. And I don't need a lot of room to get in here. Really, they're not protecting much. Anyway, it looks like an old horse barn. Cows, actually. What's this? Fire extinguisher? Yeah, fire extinguisher stuff. Old horse nut to keep the flies off. Keep the flies off of its side. But really, lately, the, it seems like the, the owners are more putting masks on the horses' faces to protect their eyes more than their bodies. Pioneer fanning? Hmm. Hey, we've got a little reading material. Some kind of a horse bite protection over there. Harness made by Toots. Okay. Alright. I'll have to read that. And then we got a little display of oh, the farrier cutting horse hooves and stuff. Old all the equipment for that. Yeah, various various uh, equipment to, to cut the horse hooves. And a fly killer. Completely empty. By Raleigh's Pyrethro out of Freeport, Illinois. Sci it's, it's scientific. Do not, do not spray the cows directly. All right, it's good advice. So we leave the barn door unlocked for the red barn, but the, the little white building bef besides it doesn't. It has, it has a lock. It's a blacksmith shop.